Egg Buckland. Back in 1870s, there was a fear that the French under Napoleon III could invade Britain. And if they did, Egg Buckland would be ground zero. The fear amongst the War Department was the French would send a force of 20,000 men along with supporting long-range artillery to land on the coast at Sussex. From there it would proceed to encircle Portsmouth before proceeding to London. But the real issue here was the French would also send another force to Plymouth. The reason is to demolish the dockyard because the French always saw the key to Britain's power was the Navy. And the Navy in those days was here in Plymouth. The thinking was the British fleet would be sent to the Mediterranean. It wouldn't be here to defend Plymouth. What the French would do is they would stage an incident in the Mediterranean. This would then cause the home fleet to be sent there, leaving our part of the channel not defended up to the standard it should be. Once that had happened, the French would send a fleet from Brest or Cherbourg to land infantry and artillery at Torbay, possibly on the sands at Goodrington. From there, it would proceed inland to capture the town of Dartmouth. Now, Dartmouth as a harbour, so very heavy artillery could be landed there. From there, it would proceed towards Plymouth, coming through Ivy Bridge, Plimpton, a long bridge, in order to gain the high ground, something like the blockhouse, in order to bombard Keyham Steam Yard and the original Devonport Dockyard. One of the possibilities was, if this happened, the action would be centred around Egg Buckland. And that's where we are today, looking down Forder Valley Hill. Before I go any further, I must credit the work of the late, great Freddie Woodward. This hypothetical plan of the invasion of France was recorded by him from a, a story written in the latter half of the 19th century and he's brought it to us today. Thank you, Freddie. We're going down Forder Valley Hill now and if the French were on their way, they'd be heading this way, coming along Forder Valley Road, which as we know recently has had a huge upgrade. I wonder what Napoleon would have thought of that. In front of us, we've got Bowden Battery, which of course is now Plymouth Garden Centre. We can see the busy road. And yet, exactly here, or should I say there, would be the very worst spot to be should the French invade. Let's just see if we all know where we are. We're at the top of the hill and there's a, a path leading that way and it crosses the road to there. Except recently a fence has been installed here to stop people crossing the road. This path across the road is very old. It would have been here in the 1860s and 70s and probably way, way before. But not only was it a path, there was something else here. This was the site of Forder Hill Bridge, a wooden bridge that went across here and took people through to there. Many of you today will not understand why there had to be a 
bridge here. After all, it's a road. But what you must remember is back in 1860, 1870, this was a crucial part, this area, this spot of the defence of Plymouth. Just underneath the road was a ditch between 30 foot and 40 foot deep, the same width. And it ran all the way from here along to Fort Austin. But because this was a pathway, an established route, there had to be a way over it. So there was a wooden bridge and the wooden bridge was called Forder Hill Bridge. So we have the French coming along Forder Valley Road and they'll be trying to come up the hill that leads down to the road so they can attack uh, Fort Austin, Forder Battery. We've got to stop them going across the br bridge that's here. It's just here, look. So the bridge was laced with explosives. So had the French been on their way, there'd been one almighty bang and this bridge that would have run just across the road here would go up in smoke. So this was really the most hazardous spot to stand in because you'd be just blown to pieces. What is today a peaceful scene would have been this scene of great warfare, death, mutilation and brutality. Before the French got this far, i.e. coming along Forder Valley Road, precautions were taken in advance. These precautions would include the trees being felled, especially those trees down in the valley below. Once cut, they'd be laid across the stream. The stream would flood the land around it, which would create a messy bog. This would make it difficult for artillery on wheels to proceed. Also, any buildings such as a farmhouse would be destroyed, blown up by us to prevent it being used by the enemy. There would be nowhere left for them to hide any bushes cut down. We would have to make sure there was nowhere for the enemy to hide and a clear field of fire to shoot against them. Where I'm standing now is in what's left of the ditch that runs all the way along there to Bowden Battery and would have gone along the other way to Fort Austin and this is where it is in a modern housing estate. How many, many of these people will know that the, the future of Britain could have rested on what happened here? I would say less than 0.1% of, of the people who live in these houses have got any idea of the vital part in the defence of Britain this area played. But that is Plymouth, where our history is hidden and if not lost. Here's the ditch again. It's hard to grasp how colossal this was. It was enormous. It was phenomenally big. And it ran along here, from back there, Bowden Battery, known as the Garden Centre, right through to Fort Austin. Look how high it would be. Amazing, amazing. Yet you go to any of the official historical places in Plymouth, and there aren't many of those, there'll be nothing on this. Just occasionally Plymouth does try to record its history, although in a very inaccurate and rather pathetic way. I'm here near Bircham View and observe the street name. Moat Park. Well, it's not a moat, never was a moat, it's a ditch. 
and there it is, running southwards towards Fort Austin. I can just imagine the French coming up this hill under fire from the batteries above. This is why the bridge across Forder Hill, Forder Hill Bridge, had to be blown because this road, although then it would have been a lane, links directly in with where it is just along there. You have to strip away the modern housing, the cars, the road, and put it back to as it was, an agricultural area. You can see here the ditch. Quite often, modern roads are built along the path of old tracks because the tracks take the easiest way accounting for the topography of the land. So therefore it's quite possible that had the French invaded, they could have well come up what was this hill, represented as a muddy lane across a field in those days. So this is where the action would have been. The French having come along what is today Forder Valley Road, would have been a lane then, trying to work their way past Bowden Battery to get around Crown Hill Fort, past Agaton Woodlands, in order to get to the high ground to attack the dockyard. Yet today you never know what ever happened here. We're underneath Bircham view now. You can see the angle of the land. This would have been the original glacis of Forder Battery. This would have been an area of intense fighting with shell and shot coming down from above. We could well expect to see lots of dead French infantry here. An appalling scene. Yet how many people today have any idea this could have happened? There's Forder Battery up there. And of course, we all, we all know the tunnel that runs from the very top all the way down to here. But that's another story. The ditch runs along the back of these houses here. For a while, it was the... Uh, a nature study area of the school. But I've been told that's not the case these days, probably due to elfin safety. It is so hard for us to understand these days that back in the 1860s, 1870s, this was a purely agricultural area. The scene was rural. No houses in the foreground, no houses in the background, just hedges, animals and maybe a farm here and there or a small hut. All changed now. I'm now coming around the bend to Goosewell Lane as it was. And here is the other most dangerous spot to have been should the French have invaded because just along here there's something very special. I've got the school on my right, St Edward's. And there's a little lane on my right. You can see it here. And also another little lane, oddly enough, on my left. These little lanes are rather special. They run along the eastern side, or if not along, actually on the ditch that ran all the way along here to Fort Austin. So all the way along here, further on, Fort Austin's here, 
This is the remains of the side of the ditch, if not the ditch itself. We have the same situation here with the track running along here. This is on the east side of the ditch and the ditch is largely filled in here but it does open out at the other end but it's so overgrown it's very hard to even have a look. So if there's a ditch running along here and a ditch running along there it's just there that means there would have had to have been a bridge over the ditch and indeed there was. It was another wooden bridge, Goosewell Hill Bridge, also laced with explosives. So had the French been coming along the bottom of Forder Valley Road, it would have been blown sky high. So this bridge here, Goosewell Hill Bridge and Forder Hill Bridge on my south, you get it right, would have been without doubt the two most dangerous spots for anybody to stand should the French had invaded. Just so we all know where we are, here's the bridge. And I'm sure you recognise a lot of these locations here. And the school, St Edward's, just on my right. What I often wonder is the nature of people is to be bone idle. Bone idle today, bone idle then, and probably bone idle in the Stone Age. They will always take the easiest option. I can't help but wonder, is the bridge still there underneath the road? And the same will apply to Forder Hill. When they made these roads, did they just leave the bridge there and tarmac over it? It's very possible. If so, truly a part of the defence of Britain lost. I'm now at the top of Goosewell Hill of today. But back in the day, Goosewell Hill wasn't just here. You can see the sign, but it covered this area here, going down there. Just to end up now, I'm walking along Fort Austin Avenue, which is a military road built to link up fortifications. Bowdoin Battery, Forder Battery, Egbutton Keep, Fort Austin. And let's not forget, on the right, it's not a football pitch, it's not a play area, it's a killing ground. The killing ground of Forder Battery, an area at the time kept empty, so there'd be nowhere for an enemy to hide. And of course, back in the day, between 1860s here, 1870s, this clear area would have gone all the way along here, down in the valley, along the road, and over here as well. Hope you found this of interest. I hope you've learnt a little bit. I hope you've realised that Plymouth history truly is lost, if not hidden. Thank you for your time. I'll see you again soon.